Now and then. Welcome everybody to my video on Battlefield 3 versus Battlefield 4. I'm going to start today with some really important points and probably break down into maybe five reasons as to why I think Battlefield 3 is a better game than Battlefield 4. Feel free to disagree with me. My reasons may be higher than on the list than yours. They may be completely different to yours. You might like Battlefield 4 more than you like Battlefield 3. So make sure you leave lots of comments today letting me know what you think about my ideas and leave all of yours down in the comments section too. Okay, point number one, map design. Battlefield 3, for me, had some of the best maps that have ever been available in the Battlefield series. Bad Company 2 was probably right up there in terms of map design as well and I probably have to say that Bad Company 2 overall has a better map design than Battlefield 3, but sure as hell Battlefield 3 has better maps than Battlefield 4. Something that I noticed they introduced with Battlefield 3 Close Quarters DLC was the idea of vertical gameplay. Now in that DLC it worked extremely well because the maps were relatively small and there was still only a limited amount of angles that you had to look out for in terms of verticality to know where an enemy might actually be. Whereas in Battlefield 4, vertical gameplay is a massive part of the whole game itself. And there are so many angles that you need to pay attention to all the time, no matter what map you're on, that it can become very laborious to play and really doesn't make for a very smooth gameplay experience. If you're just dying all the time from different angles, not really knowing where the enemy is most likely to come from, I'm pretty much going to say that's not a very enjoyable experience. I mean, yes, you can adapt to it and yes, you can heighten your senses and start looking at every single doorway that you need to look at every single window. But then that just distracts away from the fact of what you're supposed to be doing, which is focusing on objectives and killing people around the objectives and taking them back for your team. If you have to worry about too many angles or the game's making it too hard for you to focus on the objective, then I think that's a bad thing. For example, look at the Aftermath DLC for Battlefield 3. I would have to say that was the best DLC, well apart from Bad Company 2 Vietnam DLC, it's probably the best one that's been available for a normal Battlefield game for a long time. The four maps were extremely well built. There was a really nice balance of vehicle and infantry gameplay and vehicle and infantry zones as well, which meant that if you did want to just play infantry but on sort of like a half vehicle map, then you could actually do that. In Battlefield 4, maps like Lankang Dam and, and Goldmud Railway really don't offer anything for infantry combat. You pretty much have to be in a vehicle all the time. If you are a foot soldier, then you're most likely just going to get killed. And as I said, if that keeps happening, you're going to get bored of those maps very quickly. Next up, less is more. In Battlefield 4, we know that we've got a lot of choice. Depending on what you want, you can have different grips for your weapon, different barrel attachments. There are so many different assault rifles, carbines, PDWs, LMGs, sniper rifles, pistols, shotguns, DMRs, whatever you want you can pretty much play with in this game. But ultimately I think that you're given so much choice and there are so many choices that anybody could actually make that the balance within the weapon category itself has kind of been lost. I mean for example why should we have access to nearly 10 grenades is it in Battlefield 4? It, it just makes grenade spam so much worse than what it was in Battlefield 3. I mean, Battlefield 3 wasn't perfect. There were still far too many grenades for my liking going off in the halls of Metro. And it never really quite got fixed. And, and we all thought that when Battlefield 4 was coming around that, that the changes in grenades would be good. Because then at least there would be a differentiation between an, an explosion from an M67. Or like an incendiary explosion from the incendiary grenade or a smoke grenade. There would be variation there. But... But no, we all still gravitated towards the explosive grenades and then depending on which ones you pick, the RGOs you can get two, the V40 minis you can get three and even four with the grenade perk which is just extremely overpowered that in Battlefield 4 there's so much choice for any soldier to make that and ultimately I think it distracts from the gameplay again and, and makes it a worse game overall which is not what anybody wanted from the next game in the Battlefield series. Point number three and uh, this has been lamented on all the way through Battlefield 4's existence, and that's the netcode. 
Now, before I carry on, Battlefield 3's netcode, again, wasn't perfect. In fact, that when the game first came out, and pretty much for like the first six to eight months of the game's existence, we all complained about the netcode, getting shot round corners, not being able to move around cover, or the fact that gunfights were so inconsistent and you didn't really know where your bullets were going. But eventually, that got fixed, and towards the last three DLCs of Battlefield 3, I'd have to say that the netcode was tolerable. But when we look at Battlefield 4 and how bad the netcode was, and technically still can be, it's by far better in Battlefield 3. I mean, go back and play some Battlefield 3 today if you haven't. Just jump onto Noshar Canal's TDM or something. Run around with one of the assault rifles and see how many hit markers you get and see how many you think you should get and actually do get in comparison to Battlefield 4. Trust me, it's a class apart, even still now. The gunfights are more consistent when your bullets are aiming down the sights. They're actually going where you think they're going and there's not some stupid visual recoil there that's actually different to the recoil of the weapon you're firing, which makes it even worse to try and hit people in Battlefield 4. Ultimately, when you shoot people with a gun in Battlefield 3, if your crosshairs are on target, you're gonna hit them. And then they die. <laughs> Just like you expect. In Battlefield 4, that's not always the case. I mean, there are massive improvements that have been made in the CTE program, but why should we have even needed a CTE program? Surely the netcode can't be that much different between Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. What changes were made to make it so much worse? At the end of the day, Battlefield 3's netcode is better. It's not perfect, but it's miles better than Battlefield 4's. And probably for my final point is maybe the look of the game. And maybe I should just sort of pinpoint that a little bit more. The, the, the heads up display in Battlefield 4 is so thick, chunky and slow. Maybe slow is not the best way to describe it, but I've said this before, and I, I don't know if I put it in a video, but I say this to a lot of people when we're talking about Battlefield 4 compared to Battlefield 3. Battlefield 4 is like a chocolate fudge cake. When you eat it, you feel lethargic, you feel slow, you feel full up, like you don't want any more. Whereas Battlefield 3 is like a chocolate digestive biscuit. You could eat the whole packet if you really wanted to. That's probably like the best way I can think of describing Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3. Ultimately, overall, Battlefield 4 is just slow, dim-witted and dumb, and that's reflected in the HUD. It's so big, chunky, fat and in my face all the time that even looking at Battlefield 3's, again, it wasn't perfect, but it was so much better than Battlefield 4's. It was just refined, it told me what I wanted to know. Yes, there was still HUD clutter, but because it wasn't so big, it didn't sort of draw me away from the action all that much, whereas we all know in Battlefield 4 that if you're playing Obliteration and the bomb's in the middle of the screen, then that's pretty much all you can see. You can't even see the player that's carrying the bomb. <laughs> you just get to see the icon. For me, Battlefield 3 overall is just such a better game than Battlefield 4. We took a huge step back with this franchise. That doesn't mean to say that Battlefield 4 overall is a, a horrible game. It's, it's good and it works most of the time. And there are massive improvements that have been made throughout the life of the game. But for me, there were just some decisions that were made when the game was being built that really don't, don't really make much sense to me. And it's not that I'm hating down on the people that made it, but I think they made some wrong decisions. Right, now that that's over with, I've had my little rant and probably won't have another one for a couple of months now. I was just playing Battlefield 4 today and just looking at Battlefield 3 that I was playing last night, I just saw the comparison and you know what, I thought I'd make a video about that because still quite a massive difference. One final thing before I go today, the winner of the keyboard and watchdogs code from my PC video is Wilkes, the friendly Yorkshireman. That's a brilliant YouTube name. Contact me via YouTube direct message in the next 48 hours. We'll set up your address and I'll get it sent out to you as soon as I can next week. Well done to you. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you leave a rating. And as I said, comments are always appreciated. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.